What is up guys, this is Sean from Southside Fly Fishing. Welcome back to the Angling Scotland channel and another fly kind tutorial. The fly that I'm going to tie for you today is a dry fly um, and it's my version of a palomino midge. Um, this is a fly that I'll use um, almost extensively when there are buzzers hatching from the surface of the water, particularly on still waters, lochs and reservoirs. Um, and it's one that I have to say has got me out of jail on more than one occasion when the other flies in my box just haven't really done the business. Um, I'm tying it in using some of the original kind of classic features of the Palomino style um, midge pattern, but m the main kind of adaptation that I've made is with the inclusion of this hackle stacker style hackle here. And what that does is it's going to give me a really, really nice um, profile so that the fly sits right on the surface film. And then even, I mean, I can swing around and give you a look at it here and um, because of the the way in which you tie on that hackle stacker style hackle which is a bit of a mouthful <laughs> none of the hackle points protrude down so you get this really 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 nice and um, kind of clean underside of the fly um, and if that's what the fish see then i think having an unobscured view of all of that iridescent um, peacock curl and um, is something which is going to give this fly um, a real advantage so it's an interesting little fly one that i think can be uh, really really um, effective uh, and without further ado, I'll just dive in and start tying it for you. So the hook that I'm using is an Arex, it's an FW511 and that's their um, curved dry fly hook. I'm uh, tying this one in a size 16 and obviously Arex hooks are, uh, all Arex hooks are absolutely fantastic but this one's particularly good because it's a nice um, kind of halfway between um, a straight um, a straight shanked dry fly hook um, and the more kind of curved style that you see in emerger patterns and um, because this sits right between the two it's obviously very good for or, um, likes of your caddis imitations. But I've been tying um, this Palomino midge on this fly and I think it works absolutely fantastic. Um, it gives you a really nice um, set of proportions anyway when you're tying in the fly. The thread is uh, uni thread, um, Ato in black. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is obviously just tie my thread on and then just snip off the waist end. And then the measure here, if I take the thread down to the point of the hook and then come back about halfway, that's where I want to tie in my CDC. And you'll notice I'm leaving quite a bit of space between the CDC and the eye of the hook because we've got quite a few materials to tie off at the end in this style anyway. So for this size of fly, I'm using um, three CDC feathers. This is just a grey, but any of the more um, kind of natural colours, um, browns and what have you, will work really, really well. Um, and yeah, like I said, I've got three feathers that I'm laying one on top of the other. If you're tying this in much larger sizes, you might want to increase the number of CDC feathers. And likewise, if you're tying it down to the kind of smaller midge styles, you could probably get away with two. I've just got the tips lined up here. I'm gonna stroke all of my fibres forward. And then the length, just a wee bit longer than the um, hook itself. It's probably about perfect. So I'm just offering this on my side. And then a couple of loose turns, making sure everything sits on top. And then I'm going to secure it down and make sure that I put a couple of wraps in the front of the CDC, both to get it to um, stand up, but also to ensure that it doesn't slip too much. I'm just going to come in and as close as I can because I've got a nice little short thorax here, snip that CDC off. And then just do a wee tidy up here. Okay, and I'm down at the time point for my um, detached body. This is a hairline product and it's an ultra micro chenille in black and it comes on a card like this. And all I've done is snipped off um, a little length here and then touched it against the blue flame on my cooker to um, pop in a wee taper. And what I do actually is because um, of the, because I don't need very much for this at all, I actually tie off a length and then I singe both the um, front and the back end of it as well. And when I tie this in, that'll give me enough material for two flies. 
Then the measure here is about the um, point of the hook again and the length you want about the same length as your CDC. You want this to protrude over the back of the hook. So then a couple of loose wraps on top. Okay, and then I'll also take two loose wraps underneath and then pull it tight. And what that'll do is it kind of locks the um, chenille in place, but it also um, ideally will keep the um, chenille pointing upwards off the back of the fly rather than it hanging down over the hook. Then I want to come in and with a nice sharp pair of scissors, trim that the length of the body so that when I wrap forward, I'm ideally bringing the waist end about to the point um, where I tied in my CDC and then back up to the point of the hook again. And you'll notice, I mean, I've been left with a little bump there. That's not a problem um, at all because I'm going to cover this over with Peacock Curl in any case. Now the next step uh, is where we're going to tie in our post for that um, hackle stacker style of hackle. And all that is, is a length of tippet. I'm just using 6x tippet here. Um, and the length, I've been experimenting with different lengths and I find about um, four inches something in that sort of range is really, really good. What you want to avoid with this, because what you're gonna do is um, with your index finger, you're going to maintain tension on the loop and then wrap your hackle around. So if the loop is too long, then it's quite a stretch for you to get your finger in there and maintain tension as you're wrapping your hackle. Similarly, if it's too short, you run out of space and um, it can become a little bit fiddly. So I find aye, that's about three inches there, I would say, uh, three to four inches. So then make our loop and come in and snap off. And then I want to offer this to the side of the hook. And then this might seem a little bit extreme, but because this is quite slippery, I want to tie it the entire length of the body. And then I'm doubling over as well, just to make sure that this is nice and secure. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is to tie in my hackle. And I'm using a hackle from a whitening cape. And what I'm ideally looking for with this is I want a feather that's relatively long, but where the fibre length is about the same as the gape of the hook. So a saddle hackle would actually be um, ideal for this. But this is a Herbert Minor cape, and I've found that some of the um, feathers down towards the base of the cape are absolutely ideal for this. So I'm just going to bear um, a couple of centimetres of the stem here so that I can tie that in. Again, I'm offering that up to my side and, oops, offering that up to my side. And I'm going to do the same again. Just wrap down towards the front and then I'm actually going to fold this back with a couple of turns before I snip off my waist end. And that's just to ensure, because I've gone to all this effort of um, tying this in, I don't want anything to slip out when I come to uh, do my post here. And then the very last wrap that I make is a single post wrap where I tie in the hackle and the feather together. Okay, now this is where um, the hackle stacker um, style looks a little bit fiddly, but if you just take your time, and try as best as you can to maintain tension on both the loop and the feather, and um, you should be all right. So I've got the index finger of my right hand in the loop, and I'm just gonna pass the hackle backwards and forwards, wrapping up and then back down the loop. Um, and I'm gonna wrap as much hackle as I need to cover the shank of the hook or to cover that thorax when I move it forward. Um, I don't find it matters too much whether you wrap with the shiny or the dull side of the hackle pointing upwards um, because like you're going up and down and you're um, usually creating a kind of really decent hackle that's going to um, do the job of keeping the fly uh, nice and buoyant in the water. So the first thing I do is coming up, just making sure that I've got tension on both the hackle um, and the feather. And again, I'm just gonna pull forward and that's my um, indicator of when I've got enough hackle. I think that's probably about right. Oh, oops, a daisy. If you do happen to slip, don't worry about it. Just grab back on. Now I'm starting to wrap my way back down the post. Okay, 
and once I'm back down at the bottom of the post, if I keep tension on the feather, I should be able to let go of the post. Okay, I'm going to move my feather forward and then just cross it over. Take a lock and wrap onto the hook shank and pull the post backwards and just allow the feather to sit towards the front of the hook as I secure it in with as many wraps as I need. Again, you don't want to um, get too close to the CDC because it's quite easy to start covering the CDC and then you come into um, difficulties when you end up um, trying to uh, tie off. But I haven't touched the CDC at all there, so that's absolutely perfect. And then on my way back up, what I'm going to do is tie in the um, thorax, which is going to be uh, made out of peacock hair. I've got two peacock hairs here, so I'm just going to line them up and then snip off the tips, both to make sure that they're aligned and to get rid of that really brittle material at the end of the peacock hair. And once that's in place, again, just trying as best I can to make sure that I don't cover too much of that hackle that I've just laboriously tied in. If you end up with a few trapped fibres, it really doesn't matter. Um, it certainly won't matter to the fish. So then just begin wrapping forward your peacock curl. To create a nice little, almost like a ball shaped thorax. Okay, and when you get close to your CDC feather, you're just gonna take a loose, a uh, single wrap rather, at the back, and then pull the CDC out of the way take a wrap in front and then another wrap to make sure that the peacock curl is tied in nice and secure and then this is where the, the kind of magic happens. I'm just gonna move the thread as best I can just back behind the CDC once more. And then keeping tension on the loop, draw some of the hackle fibers backwards. Try not to trap your CDC, but again, if a couple of feathers get trapped, and sorry, a couple of fibers get trapped, it does not matter. Okay, I'm gonna pinch that down. Come in with a single wrap behind the CDC. Make sure that I'm maintaining tension on my thread. Just move the CDC out of the way as best you can. And then come in with two wraps in front. I want to pull on the loop just to make sure it's nice and tight. And then take everything that's going forward of the eye backwards and then put in some nice securing wraps to create a little head at the front of the fly there. And then the last thing I want to do, the easiest way of finishing off this fly is you take a little bit of super glue, touch the last couple of centimeters of the thread, and then come in with your whip finishing tool and then just do a whip finish, but make sure as best you can, you get everything out of the way first. Three turns is plenty. Okay, and then I can come in, I can snip off my tying thread. And sometimes the easiest thing to do is to, um, I like to rotate my vise just like this so that I can see exactly what I'm doing. It's very important that once this is all tied in you don't end up snipping anything that you're, that's important away. There we go. Snip off the tip. Now have a wee look at the other side, anything that's been trapped or anything that's going underneath the hook, you can trim that away and that's your finished fly. 
So that's my version, my completed version of the Palomino Midge in a hackle stacker style. The um, hackle, the effect of the hackle that you get on the top here is absolutely fantastic. You almost get like a, a, a kind of comparadon um, effect where all of the hackle is pointing either up or um, out. It kind of splays and fans quite nicely on the top of the um, hook shank and crucially um, none of it is pointing down into, uh, and none of it is pointing down below the hook. So you end up with that really nice profile um, the profile for the fish will be absolutely excellent um, and that should float forever in the surface film because it's a light fly and a light hook with all these buoyant materials. So I hope you've enjoyed um, that tutorial. I hope you feel motivated to uh, tie up a few of these Palomino midges yourself and give them a try. Um, and I look forward to checking back in with you in a couple of weeks time for another fly tying tutorial. So until then, I hope you're all keeping safe and well and when the time comes and the lockdown ends, tight lines.